Hi, I'm Patrick Tuttle, the real estate guy with Legacy Real Estate Services. And today on FAQ Friday for September the 8th, we're going to talk about VA loans. Okay, so welcome back. So th today we're doing a follow-up on an FAQ Friday that we did a couple weeks back in which a one of our viewers asked, should I, a soldier said, should I buy a home in El Paso? And my question, my answer to the question was, it depends. Now today we're going to go down that rabbit hole a little bit further and we're going to explore a scenario that gets played out here in El Paso all the time. And I've titled this, Let the VA Buyer Beware. And I know I'm going to take some flack for that because there are a lot of people that buy VA homes, or excuse me, buy homes on a VA loan here in El Paso. In fact, it's anywhere from 38 to 42 percent of our market will buy a home on a VA loan. It's a great benefit for our service members, our soldiers, our veterans. It's a fantastic benefit. However, there are some catches to it. So today we're going to look at a loan scenario on purchasing a home at $150,000. So our loan scenario, the purchase price $150,000, and I apologize for having to turn from the camera, but it keeps me on track. If your purchase price is $150,000 and the soldier or service member doesn't put any cash down payment, which that's typical for a VA loan here in El Paso, you're also going to have a, a VA funding fee of 1.5%, per, which is another $3,225. So the total loan value at closing is $153,225. Okay, so you actually owe more on the loan than you paid for the house the day that you go to closing. Now we're going to assume that you've got a 4% interest rate on this and that your principal and interest is going to be $732. This is important because this is what the number is for paying down the mortgage, okay? So that's all we're going to look at there. So, soldier, service member buys a home, $150,000, finances the VA funding fee, principal interest, $732 a month. Now, we're going to fast forward three years when this soldier or service member gets a PCS out of El Paso. Okay, so now they're leaving El Paso, maybe they're going to San Antonio, maybe they're going to Fort Bragg, maybe they're going to Alaska, who knows, but they get a PCS. So then we're gonna make some assumptions. Number one assumption, our market does not appreciate that much. So we're gonna use a very conservative estimate of a 1% appreciation rate. So the value of the property, if it's been well cared for and improved, then the value of the property could be 154, 545. That's after a period of three years. Now, if that's the sale price, which is going to be typical, then closing costs are going to be about $17,857. And your first reaction is, wow, that's a lot. Yes, it is. Now, in the notes right below me here, there is a link, and I've got two scenarios in this link. That link will take you to a PDF, and you can see what the costs are and I promise you my numbers are very accurate because we want to be very accurate in this scenario. So closing costs are going to be $17,857. The mortgage balance, remember, you were paying the mortgage down, and we're going to assume that after three years, the mortgage has been paid down to $145,044. So if you just do the math, we're going to take the sales price, less the closing costs, less the mortgage, and you've got a negative $8,729 that the service member is going to have to write a check for to sell the house three years after purchase on a VA loan. Okay, that's the danger part of it or the downfall of it. Now, if you're if you go into the scenario and you say, hey, I'm going to buy this home and I'm going to keep it because I want to be an investor. Okay, fine. Do that, but make sure that you understand the math of our local economy here in El Paso, because many of our soldier, soldiers and service members aren't able to write a check for this amount in order to sell the house come three years after purchase. Okay. Now, it's typically not until we get to the five-year mark that we're going to see some positive numbers. Okay. So what we're going to look at, fast forward for five years, and then our sale price value of the property at a 1% appreciation rate 
Now the property value, if it's been well cared for, if it's been approved, meaning that you've taken that blank backyard from the builder and you put grass in it, you put a sprinkler system in it, and you made it competitive, you made it look good, 157,651 is now what your property value is. Closing cost for that sale price, 18,664. Loan balance is now paid down to 138,319. And now you get a positive number of $668 at closing when you go to sell that property. Now remember, that's after five years. So I titled this, Let the VA Buyer Beware, because you need to know what the true cost of ownership is in El Paso when you're looking at purchasing a home on a VA loan. Now, if you've got questions about this, you can check my math, click on the link down below, you'll get a copy of my estimated net proceeds worksheet with a typical scenario for realtor fees, title fees, buyer closing costs, which on an FHA or a VA loan, it's probably gonna be about 3% that you're gonna be asked to contribute to the buyer so that they can buy that house. That's typical. Call me on this. If you, if you wanna discuss it, call me. 915-585-7777, that's here at the office. You can email me, patrick at patricktuttle.com, and I'd be happy to visit with you or anybody else regarding this scenario and how it affects you in either your home purchase or your home sale, or if you're one of our service members who bought a home similar to this, and now you're upside down because of that VA funding fee and our market hasn't appreciated, call me because we do have a property management division that we can help you out and try to get you a tenant in there when your PCS comes up. So thanks for watching, God bless you, and make it a great day. Bye-bye.